Hello there. Tutorial Series 4 of Bite-Sized Corporate Reporting will focus on impairment of assets. This is a two-part tutorial series. Please note, a link to the question is included in the description. We will start by looking at the question requirement, which is to discuss with suitable calculation how the impairment loss, if any, should be determined in the financial year ended 31st December 2023. Important, deal with both parts of the question, that is the discussion and the calculation. In this question, there are two issues that need to be dealt with. Firstly, the acquisition of all of the equity shares of MIT by Legend. This results in a business combination as Legend obtains control of MIT. One of the circumstances identified by IFRS 10 consolidated financial statements indicating an investor has power over the investee and thus the investor, legend, has control over the investee, MIT, as the investor holds the majority of the voting rights of the investee. In a business combination, IFRS 3 states at acquisition date, goodwill must be calculated. Goodwill is the difference between the aggregate of the fair value of the consideration transferred and the fair value of the acquiry's identifiable net assets. Therefore, at acquisition date of 1st January 2023, the goodwill arising from the business combination is calculated as follows. As the fair value of the consideration transferred is $260 million, and the fair value of the identifiable net assets submit at 1st January 2023 is $180 million, the goodwill at acquisition date is $80 million. The other issue in this question is the impairment loss, if any, arising from the impairment review of goodwill. This falls within the scope of IAS 36. A gentle reminder, as mentioned in my previous tutorial series, it's important to read the question line by line and deal with the issues, as it's possible the question may require the application of principles for more than one standard, as seen in this question, requiring the application of principles of IFRS 3, IFRS 10, and IAS 36. In relation to IAS 36, there are two issues. Firstly, the impairment review carried out by legend at the reporting date, although there is no obvious indication of impairment. IAS 36 requires an annual impairment assessment to be carried out. One, if the intangible asset is not being amortized because it has an indefinite useful life, or two, goodwill arising on a business combination, even though there is no indication of impairment. Thus, legend carrying out an impairment review on goodwill of 80 million arising from a business combination, despite no obvious indication of impairment, is in accordance with IAS 36. In the second part of tutorial series 4, we will look at the second issue relating to IAS 36.